Building a computer your first time can be confusing and there's so many options that it can get overwhelming. You want to get parts that can do what you want them to without spending more than you need to. I've always wondered what the sweet spot is, like if I'm just going to be playing games, how much does the number of cores matter, and what's the minimum before I start seeing real differences. I ran some benchmarks in the games that I play to find out whether 2, 4, or 6 is the minimum number of cores to play games in 2020. I'm just a broke college student, so I don't have money to go out and buy a bunch of processors to test, but what I do have is a Ryzen 5 1600AF. It has 6 cores, overclocked at 3.8GHz, and I deactivated some of its cores to test the 2 and the 4 core configurations. The test bench I used for this video is my personal computer, and it has that Ryzen 5 1600AF, an RX 480 4GB, and 16GB of DDR4 RAM. I ran the three configurations through four different games varying in age and genre and recorded the results. I could have set every game to its minimum settings to highlight the differences between the processors, but I wanted to know in real world practice would I notice a difference. So I left the games at the settings I normally play them at. The first game up is GTA 5 as it's the oldest game that I tested released in 2013. I ran the in-game benchmark at very high settings to ensure fair results. The blue bar shows the average FPS over each run, the orange bar shows how low the game gets 1% of the time, and the gray bar shows how low the game gets 0.1% of the time. Basically, the lower the orange and the gray bars are, the more stuttery the game feels. In this case, there was very little difference between the 6 and the 4 core configurations, but it really struggled to run the game with 2 cores, so for GTA 5, I'd recommend at least a 4 core processor. The next game is Middle Earth Shadow of War, released in 2017, and I ran the in-game benchmark on high settings. This result was pretty interesting to me, where the 2 core actually outperformed the 4 and the 6 core in average FPS. However, as you can see with the gray 0.1% low bars, the game did stutter a little bit with the 2 cores. Aside from a few drops here and there though, the game was completely playable. I think this is one of the games that you could actually get by with just 2 cores. Next up is one of my favorite games, Mountain Blade Bannerlord, released in 2020. I tested this game because it features massive battles with hundreds of characters on the screen at once, and it can be difficult for the CPU to handle everything at once. There's no in-game benchmark for this game, but I played the same battle three times on each CPU. Although the average for the two cores was alright, the game was a stuttery mess which almost made it unplayable. Four cores did alright here, but there were some pretty big stutters. This is the first time I saw the four cores kind of struggle, so I tested it with a bigger battle that was about twice as big. And here, you can start to see where the differences are. With two cores, the game was completely unplayable. And with four cores, the game started stuttering quite a bit. But with six cores, the game remained pretty smooth the whole time. Even though the size of the battle was doubled from the last time, performance didn't take that much of a hit. For Bannerlord, two cores is out of the question. You could probably play the game with four cores by limiting the battle size a little bit, but I think you need at least six to fully experience the scale of the game. So for Bannerlord, four is the minimum, six is recommended. Last up is Forza Horizon 4, and if the graphs are different, it's because they are. I wasn't able to get my regular software working with Xbox Game Pass, so I just used the information at the end of the in-game benchmark. As usual, the blue bar is still average, but this time the orange bar is the FPS that the CPU is capable of if it wasn't limited by the graphics card, and the gray bar is the number of stutters over the course of the benchmark. As you can see, the averages were virtually the same, and all three were capable of reaching over 100 frames per second. The game did stutter 51 times with the two cores, but to me it wasn't really noticeable, and the game was completely playable. So for Forza Horizon 4, I'd feel comfortable playing it on any of the three. After looking at the results, I recommend at least 4 cores and 8 threads. From my personal experience, I haven't seen a game yet that was unplayable on 4 cores, and if you want something similar to what I used in this video, you should look for a Ryzen 5 1400 or a Ryzen 5 2400G. However, if you play a bunch of big multiplayer games, and as time goes on while games get more advanced, you might want to consider getting 6 if it's in your budget. If you're building a new computer, I wouldn't suggest going out and looking for a dual core, like Intel's older i3s, but it can be okay for some older single player games if you already have one. I hope this makes your choice a little easier for your next build, and I'll see you in the next video.